right, so here we've got an inferior view of a brain where we've uh, removed the uh, temporal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the cerebellum. And so what we can do is turn it so we've got more of a, an anterior inferior view now, and we can see the cranial nerves. So we zoom in a little bit. To begin with, number one, olfactory nerve here on the inferior aspect of the frontal lobe. Then the optic nerve. We can see that the two optic nerves come together to form the optic chiasm. We can see part of the optic tract, but what we're interested in today is just this white bit here at the tip there. The optic nerve would be heading this way to the back of the eyeball. Then what's really lovely, or one of the really lovely things about this model, here in the interpeduncular fossa we've got a green structure and then a white one. Now the green one is not one of the cranial nerves, they're the mammillary bodies. The one you, you're interested in, sorry we've dislocated the brainstem, the one we need to look at today is the ocular motor nerve here. So, so far we've got olfactory, optic, ocular motor. Then the fourth one, and it's a good idea if you're looking at them for the first time to do them in groups of four. The fourth one comes from the posterior aspect and it actually emerges um, from the junction between the midbrain and the pons posteriorly. That's the trochlear nerve. So it's only skinny and on this model we can only see it posteriorly here, trochlear nerve. So olfactory, optic, ocular motor, and then trochlea, the first four. Now then the next four are all on the pons, or, or on or near the pons. So what we've got, slightly lateral view now, so on the lateral side of the pons we have the large trigeminal nerve. Now then from there we move medially. Now the next three all emerge from the junction between the pons and the medulla oblongata. So there's this pontomedullary junction here, the one closest to the midline here is the abducent nerve. So it goes trigeminal towards the midline, abducent, facial and vestibular cochlear are the more lateral ones. So trigeminal, abducent, facial, vestibular cochlear. That's the next four, all here on the pons. Now the last four on this model we can clearly see this structure here on the lateral surface of the medulla oblongata, that's the olive. Now, the uh, last four are all around the olive, so it goes 9, 10, 11, 12, around the olive there. So the first one here is glossopharyngeal, and on this model, it looks like glossopharyngeal and vagus are kind of the one structure, but there are two separate structures there. On some of the other models, the separation is clearer. So glossopharyngeal, then vagus, and then this white line running along the lateral side of the medulla oblongata there is the accessory. So glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and then anterior to the olive, the hypoglossal nerve here. So glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, hypoglossal. Now that's on this model. On some of the other models can be a little clearer. So let's have a look at this brainstem model then. Now on this one, obviously no part of the frontal lobe here, so no olfactory nerve, but we can see the optic nerves here and here. So there we've got number two, optic nerve. Now in this model, Here's our interpeduncular fossa. The mammillary bodies this time are white, so it's a little, possibly a little more confusing. Remember the ocular motor is at the bottom here of that little fossa, so right at the top of the pons, right at the junction between the pons and the midbrain here, there's the ocular motor nerve just there. So optic, ocular motor, and then of course trochlear coming from the posterior point of view, again a fine little nerve there. Then we have the large trigeminal lateral surface of the pons. We come towards the midline, abducent, facial, and then on this model they're showing two parts here. They're the vestibular and cochlear parts of the vestibular cochlear nerve. So trigeminal, abducent, facial, vestibular, cochlear. Then if we come down to the medulla oblongata on this model, we can fairly clearly see 
glossopharyngeal and vagus. So we can see two separate structures there, glossopharyngeal vagus, then accessory here running along the medulla and then hyperglossal in front of the olive here. Now let's go through them backwards because that's always good fun. We've got hyperglossal, accessory, vagus, glossopharyngeal, vestibular cochlear, facial abducent, trigeminal, trochlear, ocular motor, and then optic, and of course olfactory would be there on the frontal lobe. So that's the 12 of them there on the brainstem model. So in some ways a little clearer. Just be wary of the vestibular cochlea that they're showing that on this model as two parts rather than just one large nerve. All right, now if you can handle those two, then this one might seem a little tricky at first, but it should be quite possible to get a handle on this one too. Now, here we're looking obviously at the face. So this would be anterior part of the skull, this posterior. What we're looking at here, this is the dura mater left inside the skull. So we can see a couple of sinuses here. Here we've got the transverse becoming sigmoid sinus there, um, going to leave the brain and be uh, through the jugular, sorry, leave the skull through the jugular foramen there. So what we can see in white then are the cranial nerves. And just remember that if we got this brainstem model, put it in there inside that cavity, that's exactly how it will sit. So if you can work out the nerves on here, then it's just the mirror image that you're looking at here, okay? You just have to turn it around, face it the other way, and you've got the same arrangement. So firstly, here under the frontal lobe, olfactory. Here running into the back of the orbit there, optic. Travelling through the superior orbital fissure, the relatively large oculomotor. Travelling with it, the much smaller trochlear nerve. Remember that comes from around the back of the brain stem. So on this one it's a little wire. So that's the trochlear nerve. Now the next one, if we go in order, would be trigeminal. Now I suggest using that one as a landmark if you're having any difficulty with this model at all, because the trigeminal is large and it's fairly easy to spot here. So trigeminal there. Then, then we move to the midline for the abducent, towards the midline, and then we move laterally for the facial and vestibular cochlear. Now, if you know that the facial and vestibular cochlear nerves go through the internal acoustic meatus, which is the opening here, that will help you to identify them on this model because this bony ridge here is the petrous part of the temporal bone. So if you can spot that and realise that's what that is, you know the nerves going through there will be facial and vestibular cochlear. So that will help you to be able to identify those. Now then there are three nerves here going through one opening and they're travelling with the um, sigmoid sinus there, it's going to go through this opening too. So, and it becomes the internal jugular vein after it goes through that opening. So that opening is, of course, the jugular foramen. And that means here we've got glossopharyngeal, vagus, and accessory. So there's three there that we can see in order. And then that means this one is going through the hypoglossal canal. That will be the hypoglossal nerve. So that's what we can see there, that's the 12. Now, the good news is the other side of this model is in some ways simpler. So if we have a look there, no olfactory on this side, but we do have optic and oculomotor. And then I reckon this little white line that's just painted in here, that must be the abducent. Uh, sorry, so I've said that wrong now, I said it was simple. Th that must be the trochlear nerve. Um, and then this one here, abducent. Now what we're looking at here though then is lateral to that we have the large trigeminal nerve and what makes it simpler on this side I reckon is that here we've got the trigeminal splitting into three branches so it's a dead giveaway that's got to be the trigeminal. Now the three branches of course are ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular and they are just if we look at it from a more lateral point of view they are just superior, middle and inferior so as long as you know the, the three branches, it's pretty easy to work out. Ophthalmic, maxillary, mandibular. This one's going towards the eye, this one towards the middle of the face, this one looks like it's heading down towards the mandible. So ophthalmic, maxillary, mandibular branches there of the trigeminal. 
and then we've got uh, so from trigeminal we go abducent then we have facial and vestibulocochlear again going through the internal acoustic meatus then we have glossopharyngeal vagus and accessory and this time the accessory dead giveaway that that's the accessory nerve you can see it coming up uh, along the lateral side of the brainstem there and going through the jugular foramen so that's accessory and then this one here in front hyperglossal so that's the 12 there on both sides of that cranial base model hopefully if you give it a, a bit of a go it, that won't be too tricky